Hi guys, I'm back today with a little quick share and a little sort of tutorial. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for all the kind comments on my previous video. It's funny because I wasn't even planning on sharing that um, Majestic Women um, journal. And it's actually been really, really popular. So good to know. I'm glad you like that style. Um, maybe I'll sort of revisit that in the near future. As I've got loads left over anyway. So um, yeah, but... On to today, um, I wanted to launch my newest um, digital collections with you. Um, so the weather here in the UK has actually massively changed all of a sudden. So I'm not in my seaside bubble anymore that I was talking about recently. Um, it's got very cold. So yeah, I've started thinking about Christmas and things like that. Um, so I've brought out a new kit called Golden Prayer. Um, I wouldn't say this is exclusively for Christmas because there isn't actually any Christmas on it, but because it's a religious theme, it works really well, that kind of thing. Um, so, like I said, it's not exclusive to it, but this is kind of my Christmas kit for the year. I might do another kit, I'm not sure. Um, totally different, but for now, this is what I'm going to use for Christmas journals. So I wanted to jump on and just sort of share my thought process and there's a couple of little tutorials of things that I've included in the kit. Um, I say kit, there's actually two. So there's Golden Prayer, which is the main kit. And then there's Golden Prayer, which has got an add-on kit as well. Um, I've printed out all the pages just to show you what's in the kit so we can have a little flick through. Um, here's a hint of things to show. Exciting. Um, so, yeah, let's dig into it. Um, I've not actually separated the kits um, into what's in the add-on and what's into the main kit, so I'm sorry about that. I should, probably should have done that thinking about it. Um, but I've just printed everything out, like I said. We'll have a quick look through what's in the kit. Um, in the kit, there's a coin envelope that I've just put together for you, just to show you. And I've included um, a card that fits in. This I've just added onto some scrap tea dyed paper just to give you that extra journal space. So these are all original prayer cards that I have in my collection. Um, so you might not find them very easily. Um, so this is my first page that I designed. I absolutely love it. So it's got a lot of sort of greys to it, but then there's also a lot of warm creams throughout the kit. So I've kept it very sort of neutral. And obviously, Golden Prayer, there are some sort of golden e-colours to it. And um, we've got this cute page here with the cherubs at the top. I love the greenery on here with the roses. So again, this could be adapted to Christmas, but not exclusively. You've got a lovely um, vintage wallpaper here with some roses. There's some really nice background papers in this kit. Even if you're not a religious um, person, this is a great kit just for the background papers. Um, so there's lots of really lovely faded details, um, paint splatters. I love this crown. So much potential. Um, here's a really nice backing paper. So again, the golden colours. I won't doodle too much on this, guys. I'll let you obviously see it. I'll leave a link below of all the kits. Um, this is a really nice piece as well. Moving on to some ephemera, some lovely angels and things. I love this. Um, it's a vintage French sort of um, uh, design, a pencil design. Um, again, I picked it for the colours, really. And then I've matched, matched some of the wallpapers that I've given a distressed look. Again, with the sort of the bluey greys in the background. Sort of very sort of sky looking if you ask me uh, back in paper thought we couldn't have um, a kit without some French wine holy wine, I don't know, maybe some stripes, I know you guys love stripes um, there's some really faded texture down the edge might not be able to pick it up on camera but really nice one I love how this one came out um, so you've got this lovely lady here and it's all been sort of blended with the floral, the music, and some of the wallpaper. So a really pretty sort of collage piece there. Um, this one's a lovely French document, and I've added this lady here. Isn't she beautiful? That's taken from one of the um, 
uh, prayer cards, of course, are coming up in the kit. Then we've got this lovely golden star background. So again, could be for Christmas if you were wanting to head that way. Then I've also designed a sort of a missile, missile or well, a French missile or a, um, a Bible um, as a journal cover. Um, I've just printed the stripe background on the back there. So potentially going to turn this into a journal, maybe watch this space. Um, and of course you could print that smaller. You can print two to a page and have a really tiny journal if you wanted to make it for somebody. I love this wallpaper, love the colours, so sort of the orange warmy, goldy colours. Some more ephemera, again sort of based around the colours really. Oh, this one's upside down. Um, another wallpaper, so again more of the golden colours, it's got a really faint script in the background. And then these are from my collection as well, sorry some of them are facing that way and some of them are facing this way. Um, but these are really tiny little prayer cards that I've got in my collection that I've basically scanned in. And again, they've got a really nice warm hue to them. Um, and this one is actually this size. It's a really tiny, tiny prayer card. So I had to include that. Um, oh, I'm totally the wrong way around here. Um, I've turned these. These were a freebie that I included um, as a pink label. Um, freebie on my Ko-Fi shop and I've turned them into like a sepia a sort of golden tone to them so again that blends really well with the, the kit and then moving on to some of these images I don't own these images but they're famous paintings so I wanted to include them because the colours are just so rich and beautiful um, I did have a go at making some faux grain sack tags so you can see the grain sack um, ticking stripe going through them and I've taken the um, prayer cards and just put those on top so I thought that was a fun one um, some more of these gorgeous images um, I've added a hint of blue here um, I'm going to come back to the reason why I've added this blue on here in a moment um, but yeah, love those some more pieces here really gorgeous imagery I'm just going to say that I'm not actually a religious person, but I have a massive appreciation for the artwork. Um, I really, I really love collecting art as it is, um, but I absolutely appreciate these kind of images, and I just think they're so beautiful. I've got a lot of uh, religious sort of imagery in my house. A lot of people will ask me if I'm religious. I'm not religious, but like I said, I do have that appreciation. So this comes from a you know a passion. From my for myself personally as well. So moving on to the prayer cards, these I've been I've been collecting these for quite a long time now, um, and these I've scanned in and they're very large. I wanted them to, wanted these to be an option of either having a large prayer card in your journal, or if I just change. I printed two to a page, so this is more the actual scale that they are originally. Um, so printing two to a page, um, you get more of that kind of scale, but if you wanted to have the larger versions of the cards, then they are here for you. Um, lovely deckled edges, they're so delicate as well. There are little nibbly bits that are missing, um, because they're really, really old. Um, I've included one here that has uh, an open frame, so you could put your own photograph in there if you wanted to. Um, just gorgeous images. I won't go through all of them, but yeah, they're really, really pretty. Um, so yeah, lots to choose from there. So if I just go back quickly to the blue image that I was referring to, I also just brought out this kit as well. So this is um, Blue Dreams. And I thought this would work really well with the religious, um, having a pop of that blue sort of colour. Um, so, yeah, let's just have a quick flick through that, shall we? We've got some lovely um, wallpaper, some ledger, and I've put it on top of it as well. Um, just absolutely love this colour blue. I thought it's just going to go really, really nicely with that religious theme. Um, 
so yeah this is also in my etsy shop i did some tags as well um yeah there's there's loads for you to <laughs> have a flick through um kind of picked out a few really pretty ladies as well in the kit so yeah um check that out as well so that's uh blue dreams so i'm thinking i'm going to mix this with the religious kit for christmas and then also this isn't a new kit this is a kit that i brought out a couple of years ago now um, and it's called prayer so the new kit's called golden prayer and this one's just called prayer and I just wanted to show you that this could work really nicely with the newer kit. So if you've already got this in your stash, then this will be a complete, complete, oh God, I can't speak today, accompany, accompany it really nicely. So again, lots of these original um, prayer cards in the kit. So yeah, check that out if you are interested. And then also in the kit, I've included a gusset envelope. So I'm going to link the video below, but if you watched my Angie Happy Mail, oops, she gifted me this, well, she'd made this gorgeous envelope, which has the gussets either side. And this is obviously taken from an original that she owns and she's like photocopied it and she's made it look so legit real. It's amazing. Um, and I really wanted to kind of mimic that gusset effect. Um, so I asked Angie if she was okay with that. <laughs> and she was, of course. Bless her. Hi, Angie, if you're watching. Um, so in the kit, I've created my own version of a gusset envelope. Quite the same sort of shape, but very, very sort of similar. Um, so yeah, here it is, guys. I wanted an envelope that was going to be sort of big enough to put things in so there's it's split into two basically so i've created that faux grain sack um image to it with the wine bottle so if i just show you here's a sample that i put together isn't it cool i love it so you've got so much room to fill everything in there i've also included um a plain backing sheet so you can print the backs of your um a design as well so i just thought i would just jump on here and show you how to put it together because i mean i try to make it easy <laughs> but in case you are not sure so i did add arrows where there needs to be score lines and then on the other page these are the little flaps to go either side and again where the scores are I've also included these reinforced areas, so it's optional, you don't have to add it if you don't want to, but I've cut them out and stuck one either side, and then I've included a little eyelet that you can stick on top of that as well, so it's reinforced, and I think it gives it a lot of, you know, sort of nice dimension really. Um, I know Angie put some string through hers as well, but I just thought a little uh, detail there if you wanted to add it. Um, and then, <laughs> of course, I had to make a teeny tiny one. So I printed two to a page and I made this tiny version. Isn't it cute? <laughs> I love it. So again, you've got the opening there. You can stuff it fill filled with things. Angie, when she sent me this, it was filled to the brim. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is my my version of an Angie creation that I wanted to share with you. Um, so yeah, let's just jump in with how to put this together, just in case you're not sure. So I actually printed this one. This one is on just normal copy paper and, you know, it's sturdy enough. I think the one that Angie done is probably slightly thicker copy of paper than what I've used. Um, but for our tutorial, I've printed it on some linen paper. So you can tell the difference in colour when it's on a different type of paper. So copy paper, linen paper, it's a bit darker in colour, but that's fine. We've got variation there. So I've done all my cutting and scoring ahead of time just to sh sort of speed the process up. And I wanted to share with you, um, there's a score line that goes just down here, but I didn't want that initial harsh kind of 
fold I wanted it to sort of gently fold over so what I did was using my score scoreboard now I highly recommend using the scoreboard for any of these projects because you're just going to get such a more professional finish and a straight finish and if you're trying to fold these pages and they don't fold right it's not going to line up very easily so I do recommend using your scoreboard if you've got one um, so yeah for this I just basically scored at little sort of tiny increments just to get that sort of rolled over effect if that makes sense so like I said I've cut all my pieces out I've shown you where the glue tab is as well so for this one the way to know which way around it is if it's rounded at the bottom that's going to be your bottom piece okay and then this again is rounded at the bottom so this must be the left hand side so like I said it's a um, sort of a, an accordion style fold so you fold it one way back on itself fold it the other way and I've done that on either side of these and also on the bottom here so if you've got the printout you can see there's a score one two three one two three and then you've got the initial score at the top here and then one two three so I hope I'm making sense with this I don't do usually do tutorials because I get myself really flustered um, now I personally prefer using a wet glue to attach these because it just gives me that little bit of time to wiggle around in case I haven't got it straight if you're very brave and you're using um, like double-sided tape you're gonna have a very small window of adjustment so I recommend using wet tape so what you want to do is just line it up to the edge of your card like so try and get it as straight as you can and stick that down so essentially here we've got one fold and we're going to do the same on the opposite side so like I said starting off with the flaps to attach first and then we'll tackle the bottom part together as well so again we're just going to line that up in between as best we can doing this on camera watching it through a camera lens is not easy guys <laughs> try and make sure it's straight as I say because we want these two pieces to join together and be level at the top as much as possible okay so once you've leveled them up and stuck those down and then use your glue now what I like to do is put a bead of glue down the edge of this one and a bead of glue down the edge of this one and that way I know I've covered sort of both sides if you will so as you've got these flat down you want to line that up there line that up there make sure it's nice and straight and then this is the little little bit of a fiddly side of things so where your gusset folds inwards you need to tuck that underneath and this folded flap needs to be glued on top so if you can see here this divot here needs to just be tucked inside whilst we glue this little tab on top I hope that makes sense so we're going to pop a bit more glue on there push that in and then we're going to line that up to the edge she says it's not easy to film this push that into the edge and push it down okay so we've got the glued edge to the edge of our envelope and there we have it there is your little gusset envelope so yeah I hope you enjoy playing with this if you're interested in this so this is such a great way to either like gift your um gift your journals or like a happy mail if you just wanted to put some ephemera in there so these are the optional extras you don't have to you can just poke a hole through there if you wanted to or punch a hole should i say um but i wanted to have it as a little more reinforcement and then 
There's one for the opposite side. So yeah, I'm thinking that we could do so many different themes for this envelope. It took me a while to perfect this uh, template, if I'm honest. So um, now we have it. I am looking for looking forward to sort of extending the um, ideas with it. Um, I know Dodie from my design team. She's already asked if I could do a haberdashery one. So watch this space. Oh, I haven't lined it up properly there. It's not a problem. We can just get our scissors and just trim that off there. Okay, so we've got our reinforcement. And then these are the optional extras if you wanted to add eyelets, or you can add your own eyelet if you wanted to. So I simply cut it out, popped it on top, just as a bit more of dimension. But again, doesn't really matter. Um, and then. Let's put the lid back on my glue before we seal it up. And then I just sort of eyeball center here, get my little crop dial. And again, you know, this is totally optional how you're going to do it. You can even use an eyelet if you wanted to, um, one of these. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, let's have a look. What have I got? So I used some twine on this one, which is what Angie used on hers. Uh, what do I have to hand? I've got some nice golden seam binding here, which I thought would be quite nice. And um, obviously going with the, the golden theme. So I'm just going to fold that in half. Push the loop end, loop end into the hole, pull it out, open it up and pass it through. So yeah, I love that. Absolutely love that. So thank you, Angie, for that inspiration of this gorgeous envelope. Of course, you guys can, you know, really distress and make it look old. Um, that is not def definitely not my forte. I'm not very good at that, but I've made it so it has got sort of foxing all over it as well. Um, and obviously, you know, go in there with your inks, guys, and really, you know, grunge it up if that is your style. So, yeah, if you wanted to do a smaller version, where has it gone? I've lost it. Oh, it is. Then print two to a page, and then you've got a mini one too. Why not? <laughs> Okay, so that is the gusset envelope. Now, I just wanted to go over quickly another fun thing in the kit. So you might be familiar with my sewing notions kit, which includes all these fun sewing themed boxes. I thought it would be fun with obviously my Christmas theme in mind um, to include a box you know, for a gift box, basically, if you're gifting at Christmas. So I've already, um, so this is, again, is within the kit. Um, I can't remember if it's the add-on kit or the main kit. So please for forgive me. It's in one of them. Um, I've already attached the bottom, uh, the base part of the cardboard box together. There is instructions. There's an instruction sheet within the kit of how to put this box together. But I thought I would just quickly go through with you because... The biggest tip that I can give you is putting this box together. Don't put the lid together first. Always put the base together. So I've put the base together. And then once you've cut and scored, again, it's all over the um, instructions of what to do. What you want to do is put the cover on top of the box. And we're going to glue it together whilst on the box. So that's how you're going to guarantee that this fits. If you glued your lid, lid separate to this box, it might not fit. Okay, so put your base together first and then we're going to assemble the box on top of the bottom part. First of all, I'm just going to get a little circle punch and I'm going to create a thumb notch either side. Um, I didn't include that on the kit because it might not be what you the look that you wanted to go for, but I've just sort of... Um, 
made a rough in, um, pencil mark there where halfway is and I'm just going to punch doesn't have to be a huge hole punch a hole either side just to give us that little bit of extra help to open the box okay so we put that on top what I like to do what I find easiest to flip it upside down just roughly check that the box sits nicely you've got it central to where it needs to be and then again with your liquid glue I'll go in and I'll glue one tab and the other tab and I can always put more glue in afterwards but I want that initial tackiness to hold it in place so I'll put that down on one side flip it round and then again I'll glue a little bit on this tab a little bit on this tab and pop that together so now we know that this is definitely going to fit our box okay so it's really important that you put the base together first so the thumb notches will just help take it off so I'm just going to go back in now and add a bit more glue just to make sure that oops see it's already come off add a bit more glue just to make sure that it's going to hold in place let's add a bit of glue here why my glue is not gluing to there <laughs> so yeah just hold that in place around obviously the base of the box and that will um obviously will glue eventually why my glue is not sticking together today so this is why i don't like doing tutorials <laughs> because things go wrong so i'm just gonna let that sit for a minute let that stick together but yeah, definitely recommend thumb notches either side if you can. It doesn't have to be with a punch. You can just obviously do it with um, a pair of scissors. So I'll leave that to one side for a second. And then I wanted to show you the miniature. So again, I've printed two to, two to one page. And we have the little baby as well. Isn't that cute? So again, I've added the little thumb notches either side. I've used some old lace and then I've just added, I've got some religious sort of charms here, vintage ones. Um, so, and I've just put that around a ball pin around there. So if we come back to our box. So I was thinking this might be a really nice sort of communion gift as well, like a gift box if you were wanting to do something like that. Found some really lovely millinery flowers i think these were gifted to me by donna morgan hi donna if you're watching i was thinking maybe i could attach them on the box or i did find a bow i thought the bow might be quite nice on the box as well um obviously if you wanted to just wrap it around with some ribbon so i'm just going to get this golden um golden piece of seam binding that I've got here. Tie that up. And then let's put a bow on it. It's gotta have a bow, right? And then let's have a look. So I could slot my vintage flowers in there, maybe. Let's put it to the bottom. Or maybe I could add one of my charms. I've even got vintage pearls that we could dangle down as well. Uh, let's have a look. That's pretty, isn't it? I don't want anything too heavy, though, because it might end up just pulling the whole ribbon off. So I'm just going to find something quite small. Oh, there's two there. Let's go with this one. I'll attach it to my little bulb pin here. And then, actually, no, I turned that the right way. 
put it through the loop. Oh yeah. Maybe we won't bother with the flowers. But yeah, there's a nice little embellishment there for your box. Um, I didn't print this on very thick cardboard, if I'm honest. Po um, possibly because I don't have any. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you obviously print it on a, a thicker card, then it's going to be a bit more sturdy. But yeah, I just thought I would show how you could put how to put these together. It might not be obvious to everybody, but like I said, putting that base together first and then layering your uh, lid on top and then gluing is the best choice. So yeah, I hope you like the new kit um, inspired by our lovely friend Angie. Um, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, um, I will hopefully be back soon with some more um, crafty shares. Alright, take care guys. Bye!